Yeah, I mean, great game for me. To be honest, I uh, I just uh, it was the plan to uh, to just uh, follow my coach for the first time, a hundred percent. But it was good. He's he's satisfied. He didn't have nothing to say after the match. Uh, just yeah, I know she was very confident, so I had to really impose my game from the beginning, and uh, it was working very well until the end of the match. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you. Name and affiliation, please. Ava, you can start. Congratulations. Thank you. Ava Wallace at the Washington Post. Um, how different does this moment feel for you compared to doing it at Wimbledon just two months ago? Um, feels more real, to be honest with you, just uh, to be in the finals again. Uh, at Wimbledon, I was kind of living the dream and uh, I couldn't believe it. And uh, even just uh, after the match, I was uh, just going to do my things and not realizing it was an amazing achievement already. But now just, uh, uh, I hope I'm getting used to it, you know, just uh, getting, uh, just happy the fact that I backed up the, the results in, in Wimbledon and uh, people are not really surprised I'm in the finals, but, you know, just uh, going and going and, and just doing my thing. And um, now maybe I know what to do in the finals. Uh, I know it's going to be very difficult Difficult, but I'm, I'm going to have to do my best now. You mentioned on court just that um, you'd found out that they were airing your match instead of a soccer game. Is that what you were talking about? It was about? the last match, yeah. Uh, the last match um, because it was late in Tunisia, so pe it was the uh, Champions League. So uh, Juventus was playing against Paris Saint Germain. And in Tunisia, it's all about soccer, but people were not watching the game. They, was, they were watching my game, which was impressive to me. That out. How, who told you that? Uh, someone sent me a link of uh, of uh, when they were talking about it, and uh, yeah, it was like surprise to be honest with you. <laughs> Craig, well, Craig Gabriel, Nine Radio Australia. Um, do you feel you're in a better position to go all the way here? Yeah, I f do feel that. Uh, I'm definitely going to learn from uh, all the finals that I played, uh, and uh, especially the last one in, at Wimbledon. Um, I'm going to give it all, and uh, I'm definitely going for the title here. Willie. Willie Weinbaum from ESPN, congratulations. Thank you. You've spoken a bit about what you learned at Wimbledon competing in the final, but in the bigger picture, what have you learned about yourself from this year achieving all that you have? Um, definitely saying out loud what I want to do is part of uh, me achieving things. I remember saying that I want to be a top five. Uh, I wanted to win a Grand Slam um, and I wanted to qualify for the Masters, you know. To check, check. There is one more. It's going to check hopefully soon. So yeah, and uh, learning, um, I think, a lot of things about my game, about my style, about what I can do on the court. Uh, it, I'm learning to do it more and more right now. And uh, especially when I talk to my coach before of the matches, it just, um, I feel like now I can do whatever I can I can do and what I want to do on the court, which is surprising for me and I surprised myself so many times and it's going very well, especially this tournament. So uh, hopefully I will keep doing that. Um, managing my uh, stress, emotions also helps me to do whatever I want on the court for sure. Matt. Uh, Matt Futterman from the New York Times. So what, I mean, what, I know you've spoken about it a little before, but now that there is a final right now in front of you, what is that big lesson that you took from specifically the Wimbledon, the Wimbledon final? And what also was your coach tell? What did your coach tell you that you followed 100%? Um, I mean, t tactically, he told me uh, to really play her backhand because she was very dominant with her forehand. So, you know, focus on on, on one side uh, and um, uh, a lot of different things on the serve. Uh, I knew she was going to attack everything. So, uh, yeah, uh, tactically, I think I played really well. And even on the important points, I, I, I followed it and even changed a little bit on, on, on the perfect timing. And, uh, yeah, from Wimbledon, just, uh, you know, a lot of emotions. Uh, uh, just uh, going to, to that final was really uh, tough for me, especially the second set, you know. Uh, I think I handled very well uh, coming to the, to the court and, and playing the first set. But then I feel like... Uh, uh, this final, I'm, I'm going full in. I'm going for everything, and uh, definitely also learning from uh, you know uh, Rome's final, Madrid, and other uh, other ones. But um, I feel very positive about this one, and 
you know, the most important thing is not to regret because I'm going to give it all on this one. And even if this one is not going to happen, I am mean, very sure that the, another one will come. It's my niece, cuteness. Oh. <laughs> I chose my niece this time. Oh, you chose your niece. Court. Court. Sport. Oh. .com. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of things. The first one is, did you, do you know that your record this year in semifinals is 6-0 at the moment? I'm curious if there's a specific thing that clicks in your mind. And no, I think I don't have a good records with quarters, <laughs> but now with the semis, we're very good buddies. Uh, just, uh, um, I don't know, just uh, apparently I like playing finals, so I'm going full on the semis ones. The second thing is, obviously, you finally got to meet Andy yesterday. What was that experience? And did he inspire your serving at all? Like, cause you served really well today. You know, I was, uh, I was like surprised to see him. Like, whoa, oh, he's there, you know. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I hugged him, and I didn't know if should I shake his hand, hug. I don't know, but I went for the hug, of course. <laughs> um, and uh, I told him I was gonna fire my team because they all met you, and I didn't meet you yesterday. <laughs> but uh, he was very nice. He told me like, uh, like he's following me and then supporting me, which is incredible. You know, um, I actually looked up the. Last Last picture I took, it was at the uh, Australian Open, I think, 2009. He was warming up or, or training, and I was very close. But then I, when I want to go and take a picture with him, he, he already left. So um, um, I don't know. I was going to ask him about the serve, but then I forgot. Uh, but I, I think he gave me the touch somehow. <laughs> uh, on uh, your shirt, when you walked in here, said, face your fears, I yep. guess. So, on Saturday, what are the fears that you need to face down? Uh, losing finals is one of them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, face uh, all the stress. And I think the most important thing is accept that I am playing a big final and accept all the emotions that are going to come my way. But I'm very lucky that I have Melanie with me here. So she's going to help me go through this. And uh, with my team, with the way I'm playing, I feel like it's going to be a great final for me. James Gray, I News. Um, you mentioned Arantxa Sanchez on the court. Can you talk a bit about what she brings and what confidence it gives you having her in your box? And will you have anyone else special in your box on Saturday? Um, I know obviously your parents, for example, weren't at Wimbledon. Who else might be in there? Um... I don't know who's going to come to my box, but I, I feel like I want to keep it the same. So uh, I'm a little bit superstitious about it. So I'm just going to keep the same people. But Arantxa, I'm a big fan of hers and we met uh, in Charleston. Um, you know, we have the same game style. So uh, it's really amazing to take her advice and to take her experience from playing uh, different players and how she can um, uh, react to their games. And uh, she gave me, gave me a few tips that really helped me. Um, especially with my slices, with my serve. And um, I think it clicked very, very quick because we have a similar uh, game and I think the same feeling when playing someone who attacks really fast or someone who kind of change up the rhythm. And uh, I think that's why I, um, I, I like to listen to her and I know what she felt on the court as a player really helps me now. Okay, Dorsey in the back. Hi, Ans. Congratulations. Thank you. Main from ESPN.com. <coughs> you've talked a little bit about the lessons you've learned from Wimbledon. Is there anything you're going to do differently over the next 48 hours going into the final from what you did at Wimbledon? Um, differently, probably, um, yes. Some some things maybe on, on the match, for sure. Uh, but um, I think I'm definitely going to think about that one and, and think about how I played and uh, the emotions and focus more, I think, on uh, on following tactically my coach because at certain time, I think I, I played um, not, not the right way in the final, so it didn't help me much. But always it's always nice to stick with the, with the same plan and uh, you know when you get stressed sometimes it's just you don't know uh, you don't know how to think and uh, i think that i'm going to use it very well and uh, with the help of course of of melanie of of being ready with with all the my my emotions and everything i think it's going to be great sure Rob Moore from the sun newspaper you mentioned in your country that the tennis was favored instead of the soccer match if you win a slam here or at some stage in your career, what impact do you think that could have on kids in Tunisia and Northern Africa? Do you think they would maybe pick up a tennis racket and play football perhaps? Um, yeah, a lot of uh, 
I think parents are, are, are making their kids play tennis right now. And um, I, I just remember when uh, I won the juniors, uh, 2011, the French Open, they, a lot of like, there is a lot of people, a lot of tennis players uh, trying to play tennis, uh, even adults, you know, just not for professionally, but they, they really interested in that sport. And uh, I'm hearing that they want to call a complex under my name in Tunisia. I'm not sure about it. I didn't see it, but uh, I think it's going to be huge and definitely uh, is going to give a powerful message. Uh, and um, I feel like people are going to believe even more uh, in, uh, in, in playing tennis and in becoming professional tennis players. Okay. Chris. Well, it's Chris Otto with the US Open. I'm curious about Andy Roddick. <coughs> I've never learned what exactly it was that um, inspired you to become his fan. Was it his personality, his game style? And when did you first get into Andy Roddick? He's handsome also, so <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> Don't tell my husband. But uh, I think, yeah, the personality uh, is similar to mine, and I always wanted to be that that fun player that he is. You know, uh, I'm, I suck at imitating people, but uh, he does it really well. But uh, also what is impressive is, is his serve. Uh, I always wanted to serve like that. And just, you know, just uh, his charisma on the court is really amazing. And um, I don't know, I remember the final at Wimbledon against Federer. Everybody was cheering for Federer, but I was like, Andy, come on, <laughs> come on. But I don't know, I just, I just love, love the way he plays and, and, and the person he is. Tamani. Hi, I'm uh, Tamani Carrier from The Guardian. Um, g given like, the, the gradual trajectory of your career, um, I'm sure you've had a lot of lessons to learn. Like, um, I'm wondering what, what has made you kind of good at, at you know, taking the right kind of lessons and learnings from losses and setbacks that has allowed you to keep going forward. Um, yeah. Um, I think for me, it's always believing and uh, that uh, everybody could, could evolve and be a better person. And uh, for me, I was trying to be a better person on and off the court. And the most important thing I think that helped me be the player that I am today is to really understand myself because sometimes um, I had coaches telling me things and uh, deep inside, I didn't believe that was the right thing to do. But it's very tough, you know, because the coach is supposed to like tell you and, and know a know little bit better than you. But but sometimes I had to follow my gut and, and I know uh, when I did that and when I surrounded myself by, by people who believes in me, believes in my game, that's where when I become the player that I am today. Okay, Eleanor. Hi, Owens. Eleanor Crooks, Press Association. We don't know who you're going to play yet, but could you just talk a little bit about the, the challenge of playing maybe Eager first and then Arena? Um, you know, Iga uh, never loses finals, so it's going to be very tough. Uh, I know, uh, you know, she, she struggled a little bit with the ball here, but uh, I don't see her struggling much, to be honest with you. <laughs> She's playing awesome. But uh, it's going to be a tough match, definitely going for my revenge. But um, um, I, I love playing on, on this surface, and uh, I feel like I know exactly what to do against her. Uh, for Arena, very powerful player. Uh, it's never easy to play her because you know you you expect uh, amazing shots, but then um, also a, a lot of mistakes. So you always have to be ready for uh, for her. But uh, I know she's such a fighter, and uh, I'm, I really respect her very much. And uh, if I'm gonna play her, I think it's gonna be a very beautiful final. All right, we have time for a couple follow-ups, Craig. Eleanor got mine. Eleanor got your. That eliminates that one. Raymond. <laughs> um. Once the tours sometimes was criticized, the women's tour, for not having consistency. But this year, Iga's consistent. You're making back-to-back -back finals. What does it mean for you to be bringing that element to the tour at the moment, to be part of what's going on right now? Yeah, I think uh, we're just trying to manage and, and learn how to be more and more consistent. You know, it, it's tough to play a lot of uh, uh, tournaments, you know, which is... Um, I feel like I'm. I don't know. I feel like the difference between uh, men and women is like before they no didn't happen before, but they had Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal. And uh, I think maybe now we're gonna see like more players coming up. So uh, and before we just had Serena, you know, and Serena cannot play a whole the tournament, and she was pretty consistent, and that really inspired a lot of players. But uh, yeah, definitely, um, it is better for us to be consistent and, and do great results, and we're trying to do that. Iga did inspire us with. Uh, with her winning a strike and just uh, we're going to keep continue fighting and uh, honestly I just love how every player is fighting every week and how they try to, to do the best they can. Okay, Matt and then Court. Matt. Matt from the New York Times. Uh, 
I'm curious what was harder to get over the first round loss. Sorry to harp on the losses, but the, what was harder to move on from the first round loss in Paris when you were playing so well or the Wimbledon final? Well, I think I moved on very well from that one. Uh, no, I after you know what I'm like I said I'm a very positive person. It was honestly it was a shock for for a French Open and, and I was expecting myself to play good, but deep inside I knew emotionally I was tired, physically I was tired, so I couldn't really blame myself. And I I put the hard work and I put enough work to be able to to really play um, amazing uh, in uh, in the grass season. Definitely the Wimbledon final really hurt. You know, if I had to give up one of them, I would you know just lose French Open and win win Wimbledon but uh, it is where it is I uh, I was very positive after the final and uh, I I knew a lot of opportunities will come for me and here I am in the final again okay court final question uh, well, it's just um, on if you do play Sabalenka next uh, you <laughs> lost your last two I think against her and she's a tough person to play when she's hitting the ball big does any of what you've accomplished this tournament in terms of beating players that maybe you had tough head-to-heads against does that help you at all in terms of going into that match and and believing that you can you know diffuse her power yeah definitely i mean uh, you know final is a final is always a different story in finals so uh, if i play arena i think i have a i played a lot of powerful players this this tournament uh, that, that doesn't give you time but uh, i mean it's going to be interesting because i know Again, exactly what to do. And if I can impose my game and if I can change up the rhythm, I know I can drive her crazy. So I'm sorry, Arena, but I have to do what I, what I know to do. <laughs>